morning. Welcome to Antioch Southern Methodist Church. We're going to start our service off this morning with a song, There is a Redeemer. You'll see it on the screen in front of you in just a few seconds. Uh, it's kind of new to me, maybe new to y'all, but uh, we'll sing it together. I'm singing if y'all want to. Yeah, yeah, I'll get out of your way. There is a Redeemer. Jesus, God's own Son, precious Lamb of God, Messiah, Holy One. Jesus, my Redeemer, name above all names, precious Lamb of God, Messiah, Oh, for sinners slain, thank you, oh, my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit till the work on earth is done. When I stand in glory, I will see his face, there I'll serve my king forever in that holy place. Thank you, O oh my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your spirit till the work on earth is done. There's a Father for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit till the work on earth is done. Amen, amen. Once again, good morning and welcome to Antioch Southern Methodist Church. I thought I forgot my bulletin, but it's right here. We do have a few announcements this morning we want to cover. Uh, Miss Brandy asked me to announce that if you are interested in being involved in the setup and the preparation for homecoming, uh, there will be a meeting tonight at 6 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall or the, the, Family, Life, the Family Life Center this evening uh, at 6 p.m. Uh, the ladies' Bible study will pick up in August 5th at 6.30 p.m. at uh, our house. We'll be covering week six of the video. Uh, men's prayer breakfast is next Sunday. No, not next Sunday. Two Sundays, uh, August 9th. Please mark your calendars to attend. Church cleanup is August 14th at 8 a.m. Uh, we need to turn out many hands to make light work. Uh, we'll be preparing for homecoming, which is August 22nd. The social media will begin meeting. Like I said, making plans tonight. If you are interested in being part of that, be there at 6 p.m. tonight. Uh, that day, we will not have Sunday school. Uh, we will be celebrating 57 years of Antioch being here. Are there any other announcements we need to make this morning? I love kids. Gosh, I love kids. Yes, ma'am. Katie is 36 years old today. Yay. Miss Katie is 36 years old. Now, I was always told you don't talk about a woman's age, so just so you know, that was a woman calling a woman out. Just That's how that works. Uh, and Brother Kyle, I'm proud of you. You didn't take the opportunity to pick on your wife this morning. Good job. You're learning. You're growing. It's awesome. All right, any other announcements this morning? Um, I'm, I'm actually going to put you on the spot. Uh, you want to talk about anything you got to do this week with Love Out Loud, or were you, you going to talk about that? You're gonna, okay, sorry about that. We could have communicated before. So communication is important, guys, in case y'all don't know this. Um, all right, any other announcements? Anything I can struggle through and fumble right here in front of you lovely people this morning? All right, let's move to our praise reports and our prayer requests. Does anybody have a praise report this morning? Yes, sir. Maybe as a, uh, a way of prayer request, did I announce 
see some other vehicles. Everybody go down. Uh, a prayer request, maybe, is just for all the people who did hear the gospel, possibly for the first time, that God would really bless that seed to grow and bring forth salvation in their life. If they could turn to Christ and say, because not everybody just said, please, yes, I want to be saved right now. Uh, so just pray that uh, God would really nurture that that, uh, that knowledge in their heart and the seed to stand for Jesus. That'd be good. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Any other praise reports? And I know sometimes our, our Facebook Live, you don't get to hear what was said, but Miss Candace shared that 38 kids came to know Jesus this week as a result of uh, Love Out Loud and people uh, volunteering their time to be part of that. Uh, that is amazing. All right. You know the praise reports this morning. Kennedy. Yes, ma'am. That is awesome. Yes, ma'am. Miss Jana? Yes, ma'am. That is amazing. We are continuing to pray. Uh, I love getting those emails, to be honest with you. I love, I love seeing that and reading that. And it's, I read it just like you're talking to me face to face. So like, I just get pumped up when I read those. So I'm excited about that. All right. Any other praise reports this morning? We had a family reunion last night at the house. And it's been a long time since we've gathered like that. Uh, and, uh, we had planned to be out by our little fire pit area and had a little slip and slide set up and then the rain kind of come through and we all rushed under the carport and I looked over at Candace and I said, you know, um, I think how we set things up originally was real pretty, but like the last few times we had a reunion, I remember sitting under that carport and I was like, this, this kind of feels like what it did. And I, I was, I, we, we had a lot of fun yesterday. I'm super sore and tired. Uh, I slept hard last night because of it, but we had a good time last night with our family. All right, any other praise reports? All right, prayer requests. We have any prayer requests we'd like to mention? Miss Ray. My brother in Oklahoma is uh, in the last stages of Alzheimer's. So we got to see, I'd like y'all to put him in the prayer list. His name is John Prince. John Prince. All right, we need to pray for John Prince. He is in. Uh, Stages of Alzheimer's, and we need to pray for Mr. Ray Davis's brother. Mr. Mike? We're going to be traveling to Texas this weekend. And, uh, Justin's going to be having shoulder surgery on the 18th, and the preacher's having a heart cath on the 19th. Yes, sir. All right, be in prayer for the Brantleys. Justin's having surgery on the shoulder on the 18th. Miss Teresa's having a heart cath on the 19th, and they'll be traveling here recently or here soon. All right. Any other prayer requests this morning? Ms. Brenda? I have COVID, and this quarantine was widened early, and they believe it was good, and for them to not have it, and it was probably do that too, so they yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Be in prayer for Scott Vance. He's got COVID, and pray for him and his family that everything just moves through quickly and everybody stays safe. Heather? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You know, the joke in our class is that we don't know who will cry more when Jake leaves, Heather or me. Um, and, of course, Emma, who's your, who you putting your, your wages on? All right. Okay. Uh, anyway, so, uh, but yeah, we will, we will be praying for Jake, uh, praying that he will uh, just move through those five months as quick as possible and get your tail back here. Um, we're, we're proud of you. The choices you've made. 
All right. Any other prayer requests this morning? We do want to pray for the school systems. I uh, read this note today that it was in the bulletin. It said, you know, please remember them in your prayers along with the bus drivers, the cafeteria workers, office workers, and parents. And, you know, I, I kind of not having children of my own, not being, you know, having anyone to get on a school bus or drop off at school. Um, there's been moments when I feel a little distant from that. But then I thought about this morning. Uh, of all random things, my tax money goes to the school system. So, like, these are my these are my issues too. Like, praying for these kids, praying for the teachers. Like, pray for us too, because we. I mean, we're part of that. Uh, you know, it takes a village to raise a child, and um, just just pray for all the school system and that transition. You know, the, the COVID may or may not be back on the rise. It just I know it's hard. I know it's different than it's than it's ever been. But we do need to pray for our school systems. All right, anything else this morning? I don't want to leave nobody out. All right, let's pray and we'll follow it with the Lord's Prayer this morning. Dear Lord, thank you for this day, God. Lord, thank you for the opportunity to be in your house, Lord God. Lord, thank you for allowing us to meet with your people, Lord God. As we, in my class this morning, God, we talked about you being I am, Lord God. And we played that song, and the one part of that song says that you are the one in the midst of two or three, Lord God. And as I open my eyes, Lord, I see we are way more than two or three today, uh, this morning, God. So you are here in our presence, and we are better for it, Lord God. Thank you, God, for showing up. And God, as I pray, Lord, I pray that not only you show up, God, but you show out today, God. Lord, I pray today you pour out your Holy Spirit on your people, Lord God. Lord, you, you heard our prayer requests, you heard our praise reports, you heard the things that are on our hearts, Lord God. Lord, you know the people that need touching, Lord God, you need the people that need healing, Lord God, you need the situations that need you to directly intervene, Lord God. Lord, we place all these in your fully capable hands because you are the great I am, Lord God. Lord, I do pray for our service today. I pray for our song service, God. I pray, God, as we sing, God, that it touches your ear, Lord God. As Brother Kyle preaches, Lord God, as we've already prayed uh, together, Lord God, that, that he would speak of it, but it be your words, Lord God. It's his voice, but it's your words, Lord God. Lord, I pray you hide him behind the cross, Lord God, so that when he opens his mouth, Jesus falls out, Lord God. Lord, uh, God, as you open our ears and open our hearts, Lord God, Brother Brent prayed about fertile ground, Lord God, the, being broken up to receive uh, what you are putting out, Lord God. God, I pray you just do those things, that, Lord God. And Lord, I pray that you teach us to pray as you taught your disciples, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We'll now uh, receive our tithes and offerings. giving us uh, your only son. Thank you for leaving the spirit healed here until the work is done. Thank you for the gift of, et of eternal life through faith in Jesus Christ. Thank you for all of your rich provisions. Every one of us came in here clothed. Um, and, and, and we thank you for the food, the clothes, the shelter. We thank you for this plot of land. Thank you for this church. Thank you for the jobs and the money that we that you have provided for us. And so Lord, we just want to give back some of that to you, to the cause of Christ. For this church, we pray that you bless these tithes, these offerings. Uh, this monetary fund, dear God, we pray that you would maximize it, that you would stretch the dollar, that you would bless it and make it grow uh, so that it can be used for your glory, for the expansion of the kingdom of Christ, and whatever that looks like through our church and through our ministries. We, we offer it up to you. We thank you once more in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
will stand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. We'll remain standing for the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. If you remain standing with us, we'll go into our song service. Our first song is going to be He Leadeth Me. It's number 14 in the hymn book, but it's, the words will be on the screen. Number 410 in the red book. 410. Need a piano goes ding, 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 ding. He leadeth me, O blessed thought, O words with heavenly comfort wrought. Whatever I do, wherever I be, still tis God's hand that leadeth me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me, by his own hand he leadeth me. His faithful follower I would be, for by his hand he leadeth me. Sometimes with scenes of deepest gloom, sometimes where Eden's bowers bloom, by waters calm or troubled sea, still tis God's hands that leadeth me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me, by his own hand he leadeth me. His faithful follower I would be, for by his hand he leadeth me. Lord, I would clasp thy hand in mine, nor ever murmur, nor repine. Content, whatever lot I see, since tis my God that leadeth me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me, by his own hand he leadeth me. His faithful follower I would be, for by his hand he leadeth me. And when my task on earth is done, when by thy grace a victory's won, in death's cold wave I will not flee, since God through Jordan leadeth me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me, for by his own hand he leadeth me. His faithful follower I would be, for by his hand he leadeth me. 
Some of you guys may have noticed there's a little stumble up there at the front. That is just an object lesson to prove that you need to be led. So he leadeth me. And that is me completely trying to cover up my mistakes. All right. Our next song is number 20 in the red book. It will also be on the screen. All hail the power of Jesus' name. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Ye chosen seed of Israel's race, now ransomed from the fall. Hail him who saves you by his grace and crown him Lord of all. Hail him who saves you by his grace and crown him Lord of all. Let every kindred every tribe on this terrestrial ball to him all majesty ascribe and crown him lord of all to him all majesty ascribe and crown him lord of all that with yonder sacred throne we at his feet may fall. We'll join the everlasting song and crown him Lord of all. We'll join the everlasting song and crown him Lord of all. You may be seated. Well, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. Hope you guys had a great week. Mine was a little tired. I noticed a certain uh, member of the Williamson family came in a little late. Apparently, she was a little tired herself. I'm talking about someone else. Maybe they are already here, but I saw somebody walk into the song. But uh, this was a pretty, pretty busy week for many of us, and, uh, but we're glad to be here. Glad to be here on this Lord's Day, Sunday. A day of new beginning. I don't know if y'all, I've told people this before, maybe I've told you, you do realize that this is not the last day of the week. We like to think it is, but today is not the last day of the week. Today is the first day of the week. And so praise the Lord that we've come here to give God our first fruits of our time during this week, to give Him glory, to give Him praise, to hear a word from Him, to just worship Him. As Brother Russ has been praying a few times in the beauty of holiness, or excuse me, in spirit and truth, but also in the beauty of holiness. So I'm glad to be here this morning. I'd like you to open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 8, verses 14 through 22. As you know, we are going through this gospel little by little, <clears throat> here a little, there a little, step by step. We are going through this gospel. <clears throat> you know, I was told by uh, a very dear friend of mine that <clears throat> when he preaches... <clears throat> excuse me, he essentially does series. So he just does a kind of like a chapter here, a chapter there, a chapter here, a chapter there through an entire book. And he can cover it pretty quick, six weeks, seven weeks, eight weeks, four weeks. I told Katie, I said, man, maybe I ought to try to do that. 
And she says, no, because that's one way that you can jump over a passage that is hard to deal with. And when you preach like I do, you know, expositionally through every single passage as much as possible, you are forced to reckon with what God's Word says to us, whether we like it or not. And so that's one of the benefits of doing this. So I hope you've been enjoying this series as we've been going through the Gospel of Matthew. But I'd like us to read chapter 8. We'll be covering uh, verses 14 through 22. So let's read our passage this morning. And when Jesus entered Peter's house, he saw his mother-in-law lying sick with a fever. He touched her hand and the fever left her. And she rose and began to serve him. That evening they brought to him many who were oppressed by demons, and he cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who were sick. And this was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. He took our illnesses and bore our diseases. <clears throat> now when Jesus saw a crowd around him, he gave orders to go over to the other side. And the scribe came up and said to him, Teacher, I'll follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes. And birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Another of the disciples said to him, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, follow me and leave the dead to bury their own dead. Thus, this is God's holy, inspired, inerrant, infallible, eternal, true word. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we gathered again once more. <clears throat> to hear a word from you, to hear what thus saith the Lord, not what thus saith Kyle, not what thus thinketh Kyle, but what thus saith the Lord. God, it's very easy for us to slip into these pews and be hearers only. We come, we hear the message, we go, we live our life, we do what we want to do, we come back and we do it all over again. Father, I pray that that would not be the case for any of us. I pray, Father, that you would make us doers of the word, that you who begun a good work in us, that you would perform it, bring it to completion at the day of Christ, that you would continually conform us to the image of Christ, and Jesus was never idle. Father, I pray, we, we know that Jesus was always active. Man was tired, had to sit down on the well of Sakar because he was so tired, sent his disciples off because he was hungry. This man was always busy. He was always about his father's business. God, I pray that we would hear what your word says to us, that we might be conformed to Jesus, that we might be always about the father's business, not our business but your business. Father, I pray that this message that, well, first, you know, I, I, Lord, I'll be honest with you. I, I want to have a very sweet, gentle, uh, calm spirit as I proclaim your word today. So just please help me just to kind of take a deep breath in, breathe out, and just, just share what you have shown me this week. And I pray that your spirit would take this word, that he would apply it, to the hearts of your people, and as we prayed earlier, that amongst all the clamor that's in our thoughts, all the disruptions, all of the, uh, the, the worries and concerns and fears, all the distractions, including our little kids, Lord God, I pray that you would make us like Elijah, that we could just hear the still, quiet voice of the Lord speak out of the storm. So, Father, we pray that you bless this morning now, this time now, help me to speak uh, as of the oracles of God, that you, God, may in all things may be glorified. I pray in Jesus' name, thanking you now in advance. Amen. Amen. I belted out some notes just a few moments ago that I'm not used to belting out, <coughs> so forgive me ahead of time. Um. I'm excited to be here once again. I'm, I'm really, really excited about being here. I have been praying for y'all. I've been praying for each and every one of you. I've been praying for those who aren't even here, you who are online, just can't make it. 
And I'll tell you why I'm excited. I'm excited because I have seen what God can do when we are willing to step out in faith. This week, over a hundred laugh out louders dispersed from North Crest Baptist Church to go and serve the community of Meridian. Many projects were happening all at once, all over town. I mean, so much so that uh, Sister Candace put a whooping on a power washing as she is uh, washing the sidewalk, much to the chagrin of a man who is, uh, 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 what is it, cutting the grass and sending the grass up on that, that sidewalk. Candace said she, she had every inclination just to be sweet like Jesus and offer him a bottle of water. I never did tell her this, but I think she should have flipped his uh, lawnmower over like Jesus did the tables in the temple. <laughs> I mean, that's how Jesus would have done it. Uh, <clears throat> but as it happens, the first four days that I was there, because I was there all five days uh, serving at uh, various places, but all four days uh, I was part of a team that went out into every school in Lauderdale County. And what we did was we prayed. We would call for the administrative officials, the staff. We would pray for them in the hallway. And then we would go door to door, every single school in Lauderdale County. Now, I couldn't personally make We had teams going out all over the place. <clears throat> but we prayed for each and every single student in Lauderdale County. We are talking about thousands of souls that were bathed in prayer. We prayed for their salvation. We prayed for protection from COVID. We prayed for protection from perpetrators who would try to come in there and harm them. We prayed for God's provisions for them. We prayed for health. We prayed that they would learn what they needed to learn so they could pass their classes and move to the next one. We prayed also for any help that they might need for any issue that they might be facing this year. One particular classroom held uh, a group of kids ranging anywhere from the ages of 6 to 10. These kids were part of the Weems, whatever that is. In other words, they were in a thing called alternative school. And as they were there, we began to pray for them. At least Vicki did. She was standing over to my right. And as we are praying for them, I felt the Holy Spirit just really prompt me to start sharing my testimony, because I've been in some trouble myself. I've been a rotten kid, and, and I see these kids are already headed down the wrong path of life, and so I began to share with them my testimony. On top of that, as I share my testimony, I then share the gospel of Christ. I told them how much Jesus loves them and how he died for their sins, how he rose from the dead so he can save anyone who comes to God through him. I told them that God is always and ready, willing to forgive them, and that God can change their life forever. Here's my point. By faith, many of us went out in obedience to serve King Jesus. And through faith, God used me to be able to sow the seed of the life-giving word in the hearts of kids who may have never heard the gospel before in their entire life. And I believe that God will bless that seed. I believe that God will take his time whenever he's ready and he will nurture their hearts and their souls for salvation at the right time. Faith. Faith, friends. That is the key. Faith at work, working hand in hand in tandem with the willingness of God and the power of God. You know why? Because because God wants to shine his light into the darkness of our city and our county. But are we in Antioch ready to get our hands dirty? Are we ready to take on this work? Will we be faithful when our time comes that God calls us to serve in whatever that looks like? Because you remember what William Carey said. I quoted him last week. He said, expect great things from God. Attempt great things for God. I think it's interesting on another note, and it's kind of in light of what I, where I'm going with this uh, message. Brother Paul Chapel came up to me this week, told me that my message really 
resonate with him. I had a couple of y'all text me and tell me uh, that you were with me. Praise the Lord. I'm with you too. And that's what we're about this morning. But he referred to something I said last week when I had mentioned that we should be praying, that I want us to pray for a Holy Ghost revival in our church. And I can't quote him verbatim, but I'm going to try to give the gist of what he told me. He said something like this, revival's got to begin on a personal level before it can affect our church of Antioch as a whole. I completely agree with this man. Absolutely. What we did this week at Love Out Loud is no less than a collaboration of many Christians across all walks of life, spanning all spectrums of denominations, and yet by invigorated faith, living faith, active faith, we rose up to the cause of serving Jesus. We need this kind of revival right here, right here, right here in our church. We need to wake up and serve Jesus, not from the pew, but in the streets. That's what this message is all about, really. It's about our responsibility to get up and serve the Lord by serving our fellow man. No questions asked. No excuses. And this is really what I've been praying for. I have been praying, God, <laughs> revive our church. Awaken us. Stir up something good and great and powerful in us. God, give us a burning zeal that just, 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 just makes us antsy, right? Makes us agitated that we've just got to do something for God. That's what I've been praying. I've been doing this so we can move outside this building just like we did out of North Crest and serve people in our community with love and compassion. So let's look at Matthew chapter 8, verses 14 through 22 from this particular angle. Two things we want to take away this morning. Number one, get up and serve Jesus. <laughs> Pretty simple. Verses 14 and 15. And number two, I'm going to say this sweet and like, no, gentle like, don't make excuses. Verses 16 through 22. In verse 14, we read that if you look down at your Bibles, that Jesus entered Peter's house. He saw <coughs> his mother-in-law lying sick with a fever. Now, fever was a serious thing. It was a fe serious, serious thing back then. It's a serious thing today. Anytime that Jedediah and Elsie get a fever, guess what? Daddy starts getting nervous. I start pacing back and forth. I get real scared if they get fever. Well, verse 15 tells us, if you look down at your Bible again, that Jesus touched this woman's hand, Peter's mother-in-law's hands. And the fever left her is what the Bible tells us, and she arose and she began to serve him. Now, here we have another miracle. Jesus just touches this woman and instantly her fever is gone. The, the, the miracle alone is remarkable, but I'd like to point out what she does next. She rises up and she serves the Lord Jesus. Now, the word for rise up comes from the Greek verb egero. It means literally to come awake. It could also mean to come alive or otherwise get up or rise up, to rise. And this is exactly, exactly what we need to happen in our church. Do you know, listen, do you know that the moment that you were saved, if you are in this room today, if you're out there on the internet, somewhere out there, do you know that the moment that you were saved, you were called into Christ's service? You know that? The Bible tells us that we were dead in, at least in the book of Ephesians, that we were dead in transgressions and sins, but because of God's mercy, for His great love by which He has loved us, He made us alive together with Christ, and He raised us up <coughs> to sit together in heavenly places with Christ. But the Bible goes on to tell us in the book of Colossians that, that God has forgiven us of all of our sins by nailing it to the cross of His Son, canceling it out, canceling out all of our guilt, all of our shame. And the moment that we are saved, going back to the book of Ephesians, God says that we have been sealed by His Holy Spirit until the day of redemption. Listen, we have been sealed 
until the eternal life that we've been longing for, praying for, searching for, hoping for, until it finally becomes a reality. But at the same time, the book of Romans chapter 12, verses 3 through 8, tells us that the same Holy Spirit who sealed us is the very one who has equipped us with certain gifts for ministry. Do you see where I'm going with this? Some of you have the gift of prophecy. That's what Paul says there. Some of you have a heart just to have acts of service, acts of love and compassion. Some of you can teach. Some of you can encourage. Some of you have lots of money. <laughs> At least maybe some of you, not, maybe not much. But with that money on top of that, you just have this heart that just wants to give things away. You just have this gift of what's called generosity. Some of you have gifts of leadership and administration, things such as organization and logistics and details. You all know that I don't have that gift. That's not mine. I admitted that up front, and I think I've proven it. But some of you do have those skills and those gifts. And here's my point. Every single one of us, and I mean no one is excluded. Every one of us, all of us, have been well fitted to serve Jesus Christ in some capacity. If you're sitting in this pew today and you are saved, God has equipped you by his Holy Spirit to do something, something for Christ's glory, something. And then maybe that's in the church, but it is most certainly outside of the church. You are equipped to be like Jesus out in the marketplace, out in the world, out in your community and neighborhoods. All of us here at Antioch have received some kind of talent, some kind of gift, some kind of skill. We all have gifts and abilities to go and make a difference in our community. And why do we do this? So that the lost and the broken can actually see when you are exercising your gift so that lost and broken people can see the hands and the feet of Jesus in real life, in real time. And by doing that, Lord willing, they might be drawn and attracted to his heart of love and compassion and grace. But you know what? As we're looking at this woman, the mother-in-law, Peter, I can't help but think maybe, maybe some of us have become like Peter's mother-in-law. Maybe some of us have been stricken with a spirit of fear, not fever, uh, fever, a spirit of fever in our spirit. Maybe we've been lying around incapacitated, unable, unable to rise up and serve the Lord. Well, may I say to you this morning that Jesus is in the house. <laughs> and because Jesus is in the house, we're told that he is risen with healing in his wings. And because he has risen with healing wings, he is able absolutely to heal you of all your spiritual illnesses. He can heal you of your spiritual diseases. But you're going to need to let him come into your throne room of your heart and let him have control. So my encouragement to you this morning is, listen very carefully to me, let him come into your heart into your spirit, into your soul of souls, into your mind, into your whole being. Let him come in and touch you like he came into the house and touched Peter's mother-in-law. Let him come into your life and heal you. Let him raise you up off your sickbed and so you can get up and serve Jesus. Last thing I want to say before I move on to the next point. Ladies and gentlemen, time... Time is fleeting away. Every moment that passes, every minute, every hour, every day, hear me, Antioch, every month that passes is an opportunity lost for our church to reach another soul to turn them to Jesus before it is too late. Are you hearing me? We would never celebrate when someone goes to hell. And yet, if, 
and I say this conditional, only if this applies to you, if we sit on the sidelines while people in our town, in our city, our community, our county, while they go to hell, if we sit on the sidelines while this happens, then in some mysterious way, what God warned Ezekiel of in Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 6, will come true for us. You hear me? Watch this. God says this, that the watchman sees the sword coming and does not blow the trumpet so that the people are not warned and the sword comes and takes any one of them. That person, God says, is taken away by his own guilt. But his blood I will require at the watchman's hand. Brothers and sisters in Christ, if we sit in here and we continue to gather, but we don't go out there, we are just as guilty because we had the trumpet of the gospel and we never raised the alarm. Let me just quote one more verse from the apostle before we move on. Romans chapter 13, verse 11 tells us, you know the time that the hour has come for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. You know, if salvation is nearer to us, then condemnation is just as near to them. So hear me when I say this. And again, I can't make this happen. I'm just, all I'm doing is, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just speaking God's word Let God be exalted. Let God be glorified. Let God be God over this church. But let me just say this. Let us come alive in Jesus and for him. And let us get up and serve him as we take this gospel, this good news to our community. Here's our last point. Don't make excuses. In verses 16 through 17, if you look down at your Bibles, you see Jesus railroading a bunch of demons like Herschel Walker through a line of New York Giants. Can I get an amen to that from somebody? And I'm talking about when he was a cowboy, huh? Because I'm a cowboy fan. Don't hate on me. But by the time you get to verse 18, the crowds that gathered were tremendous. And and unbeknownst to the disciples, they don't know, but um, Jesus has a divine appointment across the Sea of Galilee, which we will visit Next week, as he's about to get in the boat, look at verses 19 and 20. As he's about to get in the boat, these verses tell us that a scribe came up and said to him, Teach, I'll follow you wherever you go. But Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. That's quite interesting, don't you think? This sounds like the perfect man. Gosh, this is the type of man that you want to put in the youth department. This is the type of guy you want to have as a steward of your church. You want to put him in the, the children's department. You want to sign him up for VBS as quick as you can. Get him involved in, v, uh, in WMS. Enlist him, if you will, in the choir a lot. At least get him up here or maybe put him on a committee. This man supposedly will be there all the time, and he will do anything you want. I'll follow you wherever you go, Lord Jesus, or at least teacher. But Jesus sees right through this guy's facade, and he places a test of loyalty before him. He essentially says, look, if you want to serve me, it's going to cost you. Are you really, really, really ready to do this? Are you really ready to get into this boat with me and roll with me? Because it ain't going to be easy, and it may not seem rewarding very often. And I think there is such a great lesson here, my friends. Many people are willing to serve until they're actually called upon to do it. When the project seems hard, when the stakes are too high, or maybe it's cutting in on my interests, or if it seems like the, the work won't be very rewarding, then you will find that people's initial enthusiasm quickly fades away. You can't find it, right? You call them, but they're busy. You ask them, but they're not interested. You set the ministry, and they don't show up. This is so frustrating for pastors and those in the church who 
seek to start or do something special for the Lord, seek to do some sort of ministry. And only two out of the ten people, or maybe the one out of the ten, or maybe none of the ten, come when you call upon them and say, we're going to do this. Well, the same could be said in the case of this would-be disciple. Look down to verses 21 and 22. Look what Jesus, what the Bible says. It says, another disciple said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, follow me. Leave the dead to bury their own dead. Once again, here you've got a guy who's ready to follow Jesus, but apparently he's got some other important business matters to take care of first before he can go and serve Jesus, before he is able to follow Christ to the ends of the world. He's got to take care of something. But something else is more important to just drop everything. At first, this sounds kind of rude, doesn't it? Jesus says, let the dead bury their own dead. I mean, you would think that Jesus would care about a man's priorities. Does Jesus care about family priorities? Of course he does. But if it gets in the way of following him and serving in his kingdom, then they're not really worth his time. You know why? Because Jesus is not looking for words. Jesus is looking for action. You see, we can come up with all kinds of excuses. Oh, look, I've got to work that day, or I've got to work that night, or I've got to work. Or my son or my daughter has some sort of uh, 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 social event, or I've got to take my son or my daughter to some sports event. I'm sorry, they play that night. They play that day. Heck, they play every day. (laughs) Every day can get in the way of the Lord. Or I've got to get in one more hunt before the season's over. Oh, I'm stepping on some toes now. Forgive me now. Or I'm tired, and I just can't make it. I had a hard day. I know I love Jesus, but I'm just too tired. I just don't want to do it. I want to say this in real love and real gentleness. So hear me when I say this. Hear my heart. Don't hear my words. If your life is too busy to serve Jesus, then you cannot possibly be his disciple. Now you say, well, hold on, hold on, Pastor. That's too harsh. You're probably thinking, man, I ain't never come back to this church again. Hear me out. Because from Luke's account, in Luke chapter 9, verse 62, listen to what Jesus says and not Kyle Kitchens. He says, anyone who puts his hand to the plow and looking back is not fit for the kingdom of heaven. You see, Jesus knows that you have important matters to tend to, to take care of. But listen, discipleship is about following Jesus. It's not about following Jesus. The Joneses, it's not about following the world or nor our career or our children's career. It is about following Jesus wholeheartedly at all times, at all costs, no matter whether it conflicts with your schedule or, are you hearing me? <laughs> no matter whether it conflicts with your schedule or not, discipleship is about giving Jesus first priority in your life. If you are a Christian, then you belong to Jesus. You are bought and paid for by the blood of Jesus. He bought your soul. He owns your time. He owns your energy. He owns your resources. He owns your family. He owns everything about your life. And he comes first before all things. I love y'all. But but I think as Christians, far too often we make excuses why we cannot get involved, get motivated, get organized, get activated, get energized, get doing something that is outside of our comfort zone. We make all kinds of excuses. But let me tell you something in love. Jesus is not, he he ain't looking for excuses. Jesus is looking for team players. He is looking for commitment. He's looking for disciples who count the cost, set the priority, and see to it that the work of the ministry gets done no matter what. Imagine a baseball team in Connellsville. Imagine 
half the team don't show up for practice. No, no let's just go even further. Imagine that three quarters of the team don't show up for practice or any of the games. You think that they'll ever win a game? You think they'll ever succeed in making it to the championship? And yet how much more important is the work of the ministry of reconciliation that God has called our church to? That's the reason why we exist as a church. Ladies and gentlemen, serving Jesus is hard. I mean, it takes time. It takes energy. It takes, uh, it takes resources. It takes teamwork. It takes away from our personal interests, and it takes away from our personal priorities. But Jesus doesn't ask us to serve him. He expects us to serve him. I mean, the man literally came down from heaven to suffer on a cross the eternal wrath of God in our place just to win us and make us his own. You would think. Lesson here is don't make excuses, people. Because there is no excuse for daring to do this. Let me give you another example. Imagine I come in before the board of stewards. Brother Ron or Brother Wade says, uh, we, don't, we don't have a report here for what you just did this last month. I said, yeah, I didn't really do a whole lot. Well, who'd you visit? Eh, nobody. You didn't visit nobody. Well, what did you do? Well, I'm, I was busy. I was tired during the day, you know. Kids kept me up all night. I couldn't pray for y'all. I couldn't read my Bible. I mean, I barely got by just coming up with a sermon every once in a while. Or, you know, here's another excuse. I had to fix my mama's floor out in Florida. Hmm. I had to take off a few days to go do that. Or better yet, I had to work in Katie's garden. Or better yet, I had to take the kids to the park to make them happy because you know how kids are. 